in this series of videos, we will be looking at 8 excellent questions. So first of all, it is required to introduce you to what is the meaning of get excellent questions. Now the question is that what is the meaning of excellent questions? So here we have categorized the get excellent questions into three categories. Number one is tricky questions. So if you observe in the gate examination, not all the questions are going to be easy. Not all the questions are going to be difficult. Gate examination is an aptitude examination. It basically focuses on how you are going to think. So it is obvious that the questions might be asked based on tricks. It means that you have to think over it. If you are solving the problem without thinking, either you will be unable to solve the problem or it will take a huge amount of time to solve this particular problem, which is of course not the purpose of the gate examination. So the first category is the tricky questions. Second category. The second category is nothing but the conceptual traps. Now what is the meaning of conceptual trap? Some questions will be framed in such a way that students make mistakes. That is the purpose of the question. The purpose of the question is not to make it tough but ensure that you make a mistake. And who makes a mistake? The students who are not very clear either with the formula or with the concept are going to make a questions. That sort of questions are what we call as conceptual traps. And third category of question is the multi-concept questions. So multi-concept question means that more than one concept has to be applied to solve the problem. For example, the question might be asked more than one topic in a single chapter or the question might be asked from different topics of different chapters or the question can be asked from the different topics of different subjects. So that is the reason why the question is excellent. Now the advantage that you will have when you are able to solve such type of questions is that the performance in your gate examination is going to increase. If the questions are easy, anyone can solve the problems. But when the questions are tricky or if there is any sort of traps or if the question gets complicated because of the fact that multiple concepts have to be applied, not many people are going to solve the problems. So that is the reason why we have made this particular category called as gate excellent. Right. So first of all, we will look into the problem number one. So this particular question is from engineering mathematics and selected from the chapter of linear algebra and the topic is eigenvalues. So first of all, let us read the question. For the matrix A, satisfying the equation given below, the eigenvalues are dash. So let us write the question. So now this question, if you observe, it is not, we don't have a straightforward method to solve. If you want to have a straightforward method, then what you have to do is you have to take A is equal to the top. You have to take this to the other side, the inverse of it. So whatever matrix you have here and this matrix inverse. So you will have the matrix A and from the matrix A, you will find the eigenvalues. Probably that is going to be the method if you are approaching in a conventional method. But this is going to take a huge amount of time and this method is also not correct method because this matrix is going to be a singular matrix and when you have a singular matrix you cannot have an inverse. So the better method that you have to apply here, the trick here is that to take the determinant on both sides. You have to know that you have to use the determinant on both sides. Why have to use the determinant? Because in the concept of eigenvalues, you will understand that the product of eigenvalues, product of eigenvalues is equal to the determinant of the matrix. Product of the eigenvalues is equal to the determinant of the matrix. Right? So, that is the logic behind applying this, right? I will take the determinant on both sides and I will find the determinant of the matrix A. So apply determinant on both sides. So if I apply determinant on both sides, I will have a determinant of A multiplied by 
determinant of 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6. This is equal to that of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now the problem here is that the determinant here if you calculate it will be equal to 0. 0 multiplied by the determinant of A will be equal to the determinant of this will also be equal to that of 0. So it means you will get the determinant of A is equal to 0 by 0 which is an indeterminate form. Now when you have a indeterminate form so what I will do is that I will take the determinant of this as determinant 1 and determinant 2. So I will take determinant of A is equal to determinant 2 divided by determinant 1 where I will use the concept of limit, limit delta 2 tends to 0 and delta 1 tends to 0. So here I am not only using the concept of Right? Determinant or eigenvalues, I am also using the concept of limits. So this question is a tricky question and also it is a multi-concept question. This question is a multi-concept question. So now if you observe, is there any relation between these two determinants? What is the relation between these two determinants? If you observe 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 4, 5, 6. Here you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, if you are interchanging the rows of 2 and 3, you will have this determinant. If you interchange the rows of this particular matrix, you will have this determinant. So, we can use the property of the determinant that we learn that whenever two different rows are interchanged, then the determinant of the matrix is multiplied by minus 1. Right? So, what I can do is that, if I know the determinant of this is delta 2, I can write this one as delta A. I will interchange the, I will interchange the rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and I will multiply with it of minus 1. And of course, this will be equal to the top determinant of 2. So, determinant of A is equal to, okay, determinant of A multiplied by minus 1 into delta 2 is equal to the top delta 2. So, I can write the determinant of A is equal to the top minus 1. So, instead of taking it as delta 2 by delta 0 by 0, I have taken the concept of limits and I found out the value of delta 2, delta 1 in terms of delta 2 and I found out this value is equal to the top minus of delta 2. Delta 2 gets cancelled and you have minus 1. So you will finalize that the determinant of A is equal to minus 1. Now once the determinant of the matrix is equal to minus 1, it should be equal to the product of eigenvalues. Now if you look at the options that you are given, the first option is given as 1 minus j comma j. So if you multiply the eigenvalues here, j minus j into j is going to be 1. Multiplied by 1, it is 1. So option A is eliminated because the product should be equal to the determinant of A. So the product of eigenvalues should be equal to determinant of A, which is not satisfied. So I am cancelling out the first option. Second option is 1 comma 1 comma 0. So this is also equal to the top 0, which is not equal to the top minus 1. So second option is cancelled out. Third option is 1 comma 1 comma minus 1. If you observe the product, the product is equal to minus 1. So this option can be correct. Let us also look at the option D. The option D says it is 1 comma 0 comma 0. The value is equal to the product is equal to the two 0. So therefore, option D is also wrong. So the answer for this question is, Option C. So this question is tricky in a way that you will be stuck with here, a 0 by 0 and also to get an idea that you have to take the determinant of on both sides is also a trick here. Thank you students.